Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Refine Horizons. This is another Field Survey Friday video I'm doing for my uh, survey techs. Some of those folks don't get out in the field as much as we want. We try and drag them, but sometimes they kick and scream, especially when it's cold outside. Anyways, we're trying to, <laughs> trying to do some videos to kind of help them understand a little bit more about the equipment that we use out in the field and how it works and kind of what, what when, they, when they get a point file or they get some measurement data in the office, you know, where's that data coming from? It's really important to be a well-rounded surveyor to understand what's going on in the field, even if you don't work in the field all the time. I, I hope these videos will also help, you know, civil engineers or architects or other design professionals, GIS professionals that maybe have never done field work themselves, but they want to understand a little bit more about how surveyors that they work with actually do what they do. So uh, uh, this is one video kind of in a set of videos that we're doing on total station operations. Uh, this, there might be one more video I'm going to do on uh, some grid layout and some things that you do in construction. That's not exactly my strong suit, so I may get some help from, from a, um, one of my partners uh, that has a little more experience there. But what we're going to talk about today is traversing. Okay, now that you think of that word traversing, what does that mean? You know, traverse usually means to go across, right? That's kind of the, the, the meaning of the English word. Okay, but the word traverse has a special meaning to surveyors. Okay, and, and it has to do with the idea of surveying across something, traversing, okay, but it refers to a, a particular set of operations that you do at the total station. Okay, so I've got an example on the board. We're just going to walk through it together. Okay. So let's say we want to survey around this building. Okay, we need to survey all the building corners and all the, the sidewalks and doors and, and, and um building features around this building, okay? And when we go out, we set up, we set two points, RH1 and RH2. Okay, so we have this problem when, as surveyors, um, whenever we're on a site, if we can't see everything we need from two points, then we gotta figure out how do we set additional control points and relate them to the first two pair, the, the, the first pair of control points that we put down. So this, this is, this First two points you'll put on a site is usually your azimuth pair if you're doing total station work. They're kind of special points, okay, but we call them the azimuth pair, okay? So once you need a third point, what you need to set up on a third point that's outside of your azimuth pair, you need to do what's called a traverse, okay? That's what surveyors call it, <clears throat> okay? So there's, there's two kinds of traverses, okay? I'm going to write that over here for you guys, okay? So there's two kinds of traverses. We'll talk about both. Okay, so uh, the first kind of traverse is called a closed traverse. Okay, and the second kind of traverse is what we call an open traverse. Okay, and actually if you do it right, you can calculate closures for both of these, and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, open and closed. So in this example I'm going to give you here, we're actually going to do a closed traverse. Okay, so what you do, we're going to put our instrument at number one. Okay, so our instruments here and our back sights here. Okay, we set up, we survey everything we can. Okay. And then, so we survey everything we can from one. Okay, so we shoot all this stuff on the building that we can see from one. Okay. All right now, we can't see any more from one, so we flop. Okay, so we go down. Now we Now we're coming down to Instruments at two, okay, rods at one. And now we're gonna shoot everything we can, everything we can see on the building from two. Okay, now we've surveyed everything we can see from two and from one. We need to get to this bottom half of the building down here, the south half of the building. How do we do that? We'll say north is to the top of the whiteboard. Okay, well to do that, we traverse. Okay, so what we're gonna do is while we're set up on two, we're gonna back sight one. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, these, these are little side shot vectors. That's what we would call those. Okay, so we're going to set up at two and we're going to back, we're going to back sight one. Okay, but this is a special kind of back sight. It's the first part of a traverse angle. So I'm going to draw it in orange. So we back sight one. Okay, now we've come down here and we've set a new control point, which we call RH number three. Okay, but we don't have any coordinates on it yet. We don't know where it's at on our coordinate system. We just, we physically set a point. Okay, so then what we do is we turn and we sight our foresight rod at RH number three. Okay, and it might be a tri rack and a glass on a tripod, but in my shop it's a bipod, usually rod right on a bipod. 
Okay. And we turn down here to RH3. Okay, so we've turned this angle now. Okay, and actually it's going to be an angle to the right. So we've turned this angle. Okay, and we stored these slope distances, both these slope distances. Okay, and our total station software or data collector is going to calculate a coordinate at three. So now we know where three is at. Okay, that's the first angle in our traverse. Okay, so if we could, we could kind of put here, if we want, we could put setup. Uh, we could put, uh, let's say, let's say uh, point number. Okay, and we're going to say, we also call them uh, turns. Okay, so uh, we're going to call this uh, the turn number. Okay, so we're at point number two, and we make our first turn. We turn our first angle in our traverse, shoot our two distances. Okay, now at three, we can move up to three. So that's kind of one of the key concepts of a, of a traverse. That's a part of what makes it different from just a side shot, is in a traverse, you're shooting a control point that you're then going to go occupy. So now we're going to move up. Okay, so we move our instrument up to three. Now we're going to back sight two with our rod. Okay, and we come over here, we set another point. Now it's important, because we want a close traverse, it's important that when we set RH number four, that we can see it from both three and one, or we're not gonna be able to close out our traverse. Okay, so we come over here and we set four. Okay, now I always do that, I always do that right after I set up. So I set up on three, first thing I do is set four. Now I turn and shoot my side shots to the parts of the building that I couldn't see, okay? Now, let's just say we've got a corner like this that we saw from one. It doesn't hurt. Shoot it again from three. That's just to check on your work. Okay. Now, you may say, hey, Landon, we got all the information we need on the building. We don't need four. We don't have to set up at four. Yes, we do. We have to set up at four to close our traverse, right? Because if we have a mistake here on our shot to three or set up at three, we're not going to know it because we don't have a check. So... We don't want to leave what we call an open-ended, non-closed traverse here, right? With no way to check our closures. So we're going to come down. We're going to traverse. We're going to shoot four. We're going to put our rod over here at four. And we're going to shoot four. Okay. So we've just turned this angle to the right. And we've shot these slope distances. Okay. So now we've actually got two, two slope distances there. Okay, and we've turned that angle. So at RH number three, we turn number two. Turned angle number two and shot our slope distances. Okay, now <clears throat> we need to close out to RH1. We don't have this connection here, so we've got an open figure. That's no bueno in surveying, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move our setup. Now we're going to put our back sight at three. We're going to put our instrument at four, and our four sight is back at RH number one. Okay, now, just because we're good surveyors, we're going to shoot a couple of these building corners from four, just as a check, even though we already shot them. Okay, but then we're going to turn, and we're going to traverse up to one. Okay, so we turn this angle to the right, and we shoot these slope distances. Okay, so that's from RH point number four, we turned three. Okay, now we'll have a coordinate here. Calculate, we're gonna calculate another coordinate on one. Okay, so we have the coordinate we started with. Now we're gonna have a coordinate from this setup at four. They are not gonna be the same. There's always gonna be some error. So what we could actually do if we wanted is we could inverse between those two points. Okay, so if I draw a little detail over here, if this is RH number one, and let's say when we shoot back, so we occupy the physical point number one, but we call it RH number five. You'll see if you zoom in on the map screen in your data collector, those aren't exactly the same spot. There's going to be a little difference. We can inverse between these and figure out what our closure error is, our linear closure error in feet. Now, you might think, okay, well, all right, Landon, I did that extra setup at four now, so I could close out to one. I'm done, right? No, you're not done. Okay, so two effectively close out the traverse, you need to know what this closing angle is. So we've measured these three angles, but we haven't measured this angle yet, and we want to know what our angular misclosure is. So you've got an extra setup at one. We're going to come to one. We're going to turn this angle to the right. Okay, now we've got four angles on a four-sided figure. We can calculate our angu angular misclosure 
I guess I need to do another video that shows you guys how to how to angle balance and compass balance and traverse. I'll have to see if somebody already did that on YouTube because that's pretty painful. I don't know if I want to do that, but but uh, you guys need to know how to do it, so I might have to do some videos. Okay, so now at setup number four. Sorry, we went back to one, now we're at one, and we turned our fourth angle. If you've got four sides to your traverse, you need four angles turned. If you have six sides to your traverse, you need six angles turned. If you have eight sides to your traverse, you need eight. Okay, to calculate your angular misclosure. So that's what a traverse is. That's the operation. Okay, now just a quick example. That was a closed traverse. Okay, so it makes a closed polygon. Okay, you can also have an open traverse. Okay, so an example where you might do that Let's just say you were you had a highway on a canyon. So here's a river in a canyon. Okay, and so you're you're surveying along the river, let's say along the road, there's a little highway that runs along the canyon. Okay. <clears throat> it's going to be really hard to get closed traverse in this situation. Okay. So you set these control points kind of on this sinuous or snaky figure here, right? One, two, three, four, five, okay? So you've got a closed traverse, and I'm, I'm not a closed traverse, so now we're gonna traverse, we're gonna go like this, okay? So we're gonna turn this angle, okay, this angle, this angle, okay? Now, The only reason, let, let me think about how I want to word this. The only circumstance in which this is okay is if you have a coordinate on one and you have a coordinate on five that you can check into. Okay, that, That's an open traverse, but you can calculate a closure because you've got a known coordinate on five. Now, how do you get that? Well, let's just say you GPS one and five. Okay, so maybe you can't see along this canyon here because of the trees and the mountains, but you get down here to an opening, a wide area in the canyon, you can GPS five and you can GPS one. Okay, then you have a coordinate here. All right, now you can calculate a closure. But actually, when you close this out, to close out a linear traverse, okay, you actually need two points. Okay, so you need a coordinate on five and you need a coordinate on six. Okay, because that lets you calculate your angular misclosure here. If you only have five at the end of your, op your open traverse like this, if you only have a coordinate on one point, you can only calculate your linear misclosure. You can't calculate your angular misclosure, so you need two points at the end of your open-ended traverse to calculate your angular closure and your linear misclosure. Okay, your angular misclosure and your linear misclosure. I need to do, but we need to do an example of both. We need to compass balance an angle balance, both a linear and a closed traverse. We'll do that in another video. I'll put that on my list. Okay, but that's an example of an op open traverse or, or a, you could call it a linear traverse so it doesn't make a closed figure. Again, if you're gonna do that as a surveyor, you wanna make sure you can close out on a couple points with some known coordinates, okay? All right, so what do traverse notes look like? If you look at, if, you, if you're gonna have traverse field notes, what should those look like? Okay, so at, at every setup, you wanna record the same information. Okay, and I actually did this old school when I was in college. Okay, so you're gonna tell it what, you wanna write down what point you're at. So instrument at RH number two. Okay, then you, you wanna write down your HI. So we'll say HI equals 540. Okay, then you wanna record the information to your back sight and to your foresight. So you're gonna put, I like to put back sight two RH number one, okay? Then you put your rod height. Rod height equals six foot. Okay, and then you gotta tell it where you're looking ahead to. Foresight, RH number three, rod height equals six foot. Okay, now you need to write down the horizontal and the vertical angles, okay? so. <clears throat> Actually, what would be better to what would be better is when you write down your back sight, then you put your horizontal angle. You can tell it's been a while since I did this. Horizontal angle, your vertical angle, and your slope distance. You write those down. Now these get stored in a data collector, but when I was learning to survey, we actually wrote these down in our book because if your data got corrupted or lost, you wanted to 
Though traversing's a lot of work. You wanted to have your stuff written down. Okay, so let's just say our horizontal angle here is 88 degrees. Actually, we, in our example, we were turning angles to the right. So this would be 272, 10, 20. Okay, vertical angle, let's say, would be 92, 13, 48. Okay, and our slope distance, let's say, was 242.61 feet. Okay, then you do your foresight. So you foresight to RH number two, rod height equals six feet. Okay, you put down the same information. So for every leg of the traverse, you're going to put your horizontal angle, your vertical angle, and your slope distance. Okay, so that's a full set of traverse notes for one setup. Okay, let's just review. Instrument at RH2. That's where your, your total station is at. The height of your instrument, 540. Okay, then you have the same set of information for both your backside and your foresight. Backside 2, RH number 1, with the rod height of 6 feet. Your horizontal angle, your vertical angle, and your slope distance. Okay, then your foresight to RH number... <laughs> this said 2, I'm sorry, this should be 3. RH number three, rod height is six feet, your horizontal angle, your vertical angle, your slope distance. Okay, now in a traverse, we would then move up to three, okay, then this would, same, same note format, okay, RH number three, 535, okay, we're back sighting now, RH number two, and we're gonna force eight, RH number four, you'd write down these angles, okay. I'm going to do a problem set where you have to read and interpret some traverse notes, okay? And then I, I guess I got to do some, <laughs> some videos on calculating uh, linear and angular misclosures on open and closed traverses. We'll, we'll do that for you guys. Okay, those will, be, those will be gnarly videos, but we'll get it done. Okay, guys, so that, that's just kind of the basic overview of traversing with the total station. Kind of quick review of the note format. Should be enough to help you guys analyze traverse notes on, a, on, a, on an exam or a test and, and be able to answer some basic questions. So uh, I've got some more videos to do. We'll, we'll do some uh, angular misclosure and angle balance and, and, and compass balance calculations on, on traverses. Um, a lot of that now is done actually in the computer, uh, but it, it, it's good to know how to do it. I learned how to do it by hand when I was in college. It was brutally painful, but we'll do that together. Uh, you know what? I'll look and I'll look on YouTube. If maybe there's some good videos some guys have already on how to angle balance and compass balance. Uh, probably some videos on how to do that in Excel. Excel's probably the right tool. So uh, we'll walk through it. I'll, I'll either find some good videos or I'll do some videos myself. So appreciate you guys watching this uh, Field Survey Friday video from Redefine Horizons. If you like the videos, hit subscribe on YouTube. If you have a topic you want us to cover for Field Survey Fridays, uh, email me or let me know in the comments and we'll get it on the list. Thanks for watching.